Bipolar disorder. Bipolar disorder is a mental illness marked by extreme shifts in mood, energy, and activity levels. These aren't normal ups and downs. They're intense, long-lasting episodes, ranging from mania to depression. There are three major types. Bipolar 1. Full manic episodes and full depressive episodes. Bipolar 2. Hypomania, less intense and deep depression. Cyclothemia. Frequent mood shifts but less severe. Let's start with mania. During mania, it's like the brain is on turbo mode. You feel euphoric, invincible, and full of energy. You may sleep 1-2 hours and still feel amazing. Thoughts race. Speech speeds up. You take risks. Shopping sprees. Quitting your job. Starting a dozen projects at once. It feels powerful, until it spirals out of control. Then comes the crash. Depression. You lose all motivation. Getting out of bed feels like climbing a mountain. You feel hopeless. Empty. Some people cry for hours. Others feel numb. Some even think about ending their life. Worse, you remember everything you did during mania, the texts, the spending, the risky choices, and it hits you like a freight train. To others, it might seem like you're just being dramatic. They might say, why are you so up and down? But inside, it's a mental and emotional tug of war. People with bipolar disorder often learn to mask it, showing up to work with a smile, even when they're breaking inside. Many famous people live with bipolar disorder. Carrie Fisher, aka Princess Leia, called herself a mentally ill survivor. Kanye West has spoken about the highs and lows that come with his diagnosis. Everyday people, teachers, artists, parents, live with it quietly. It doesn't care about fame or background. It's not a weakness, it's a brain condition. Let's clear up a few things. Myth. Bipolar people are just moody. Fact. This is a medical disorder involving chemical imbalances. Myth. Mania is fun. Fact. It can feel good until it ruins relationships and bank accounts. Myth. They're dangerous. Fact. People with bipolar disorder are more likely to harm themselves than anyone else. The best part? It's treatable. Mood stabilizers like lithium, therapy like CBT, and lifestyle changes like sleep schedules and routine can help. Support groups, boundaries, and the right doctor make all the difference. Bipolar disorder doesn't have to control your life, but it does require management and understanding. Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, OCD. You've heard the jokes. He's so OCD about his desk. She washes her hands like a hundred times a day. But here's the truth. Obsessive compulsive disorder is not a personality quirk. It's not about being super neat or liking things in order. It's a serious mental health condition that can feel like being trapped in your own mind. And no, it's not just about hand washing. The cycle goes like this. You have a scary or disturbing thought. You try to neutralize it with a ritual. You feel relief, temporarily. Then the thought comes back, stronger, louder. This is the part most people never hear about. Intrusive thoughts can be horrifying. Thoughts about hurting loved ones, shouting obscenities in church, or thinking you're contaminated with a deadly disease. The thoughts don't reflect what the person wants. In fact, they're terrified of them. That's why they try to fight back with rituals. Not all compulsions are visible. Sure, some people check the door lock 20 times, but others repeat prayers in their head, count silently, or mentally replay conversations to make sure they didn't say something wrong. They might even avoid certain numbers, colors, or people, convinced it prevents disaster. Imagine spending hours a day trying to quiet your brain. Imagine hiding it from everyone. Terrified someone will say, that's crazy. People with OCD often feel exhausted, ashamed, and isolated. It's not about being clean or organized. It's about anxiety so intense, they'll do anything to escape it, even if it means checking the stove 42 times. A student washes her hands until they bleed, not because she likes it, but because she feels contaminated by touching a desk. A man avoids driving because he fears he'll accidentally run someone over and not realize it. A teenager spends hours confessing imaginary sins to their parents, terrified they'll go to hell otherwise. OCD can take any theme, harm, religion, contamination, sexuality, morality, numbers, you name it. The content may change, but the pattern stays the same. Let's crush some myths. Myth. Everyone's a little OCD. Fact. OCD is a diagnosed disorder, not a personality trait. Myth. OCD is all about cleanliness. Fact. Many people with OCD are messy. Their obsessions have nothing to do with dirt. Myth. They enjoy their rituals. Fact. The rituals are exhausting and feel compulsory, not fun. Myth. If the thoughts are so scary, why not just ignore them? Fact. That's like telling someone with allergies to just stop sneezing. Living with OCD is like being stuck in a mental trap your brain refuses to let go of. But people do get better. They live full lives with help, support, and the right tools. If you have OCD, you are not broken. You are not alone. And you are so much more than your thoughts. Borderline Personality Disorder BPD Borderline Personality Disorder is a mental health condition marked by Intense emotional swings Fear of abandonment Unstable self-image and identity 
chaotic relationships. It's not just moodiness. It's a deep struggle with regulating emotions, forming secure attachments, and feeling safe in the world. People with BPD often feel like their emotions are set to maximum volume. A small argument can feel like betrayal. A slight delay in a text response can trigger panic. And when they're hurt, it's not just sadness, it's devastation. They can go from joy to rage to guilt in minutes, not because they want to, but because their brain struggles to stabilize emotional responses. At the core of BPD is a haunting fear of abandonment. This fear isn't just uncomfortable, it's all-consuming. A canceled plan feels like rejection. Silence feels like betrayal. People with BPD may cling tightly to relationships or push people away preemptively because they're terrified of being left behind. They often ask, are you mad at me, even when nothing's wrong? Another hallmark of BPD is an unstable sense of self. One day they feel confident and independent. The next they might feel worthless or unsure of who they are at all. They may mirror other people's opinions, hobbies, even personalities, because they're searching for a stable identity. Relationships can feel like a battlefield for someone with BPD. They may idealize someone one moment, putting them on a pedestal, and feel completely betrayed the next over a minor issue. This isn't manipulation, it's a defense mechanism rooted in fear and pain. Love feels like safety, but also like danger. Many with BPD struggle with impulsive behaviors, self-harm, substance use, risky sex or spending sprees. Why? Because when emotional pain feels unbearable, they reach for anything that numbs or distracts. It's not attention-seeking, it's pain management. Let's bust some myths. Myth. People with BPD are manipulative. Fact. Many behaviors stem from fear, not malice. Myth. They're just toxic. Fact. BPD is a disorder, not a moral flaw. Myth. They're impossible to love. Fact. With understanding and support, people with BPD can have deep, meaningful relationships. Myth. They'll never get better. Fact. Many recover with therapy and time. The good news? Borderline personality disorder is treatable. The most effective therapy is dialectical behavior therapy, DBT, which teaches emotional regulation, distress tolerance, and mindfulness. With the right tools, many people go on to live balanced, fulfilling lives. It's not easy, but it's absolutely possible. Schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is a chronic mental disorder that affects how a person thinks, feels, and behaves. It doesn't mean having multiple personalities. That's a completely different disorder. Instead, schizophrenia distorts reality itself. People may hear voices, see things that aren't there, or hold beliefs that seem irrational to others, but are very real to them. It affects about 1 in 100 people globally. It usually begins in late teens to early adulthood and tends to be lifelong, but it can be managed with treatment. Schizophrenia is made up of three main categories of symptoms. 1. Positive symptoms, things added to the mind. Hallucinations especially hearing voices. Delusions, false beliefs, disorganized thinking or speech. 2. Negative symptoms, things taken away. Flat emotions, lack of motivation. Social withdrawal, inability to feel pleasure. 3. Cognitive symptoms, disruptions in thought trouble focusing, memory issues, confused logic or decision-making. Imagine hearing a voice constantly whispering in your ear. You're being watched. Don't trust them. They're going to hurt you. Now imagine no one else hears it, and everyone tells you it's not real. That's not just scary. It's isolating. Delusions are another hallmark of schizophrenia. These are deeply held beliefs that aren't based in reality, but feel completely true to the person. Common types include paranoid delusions. People are out to get me. Grandiose delusions. I'm a chosen savior. Somatic delusions. My organs have been replaced. You can't argue someone out of a delusion. It's not about logic, it's about perception. While hallucinations and delusions get all the attention, the negative symptoms can be just as devastating and harder to spot. People may become emotionally numb. Stop taking care of themselves. Avoid social interaction. It's not laziness. It's not being weird. It's the illness flattening their emotional world. Scientists aren't 100% sure, but we know it's not because someone's weak or crazy. Schizophrenia is linked to genetics, brain chemistry and structure, environmental stressors, trauma, drug use, prenatal complications. Think of it as a brain disorder, not a character flaw. Hollywood often portrays people with schizophrenia as violent villains or dangerous lunatics. But the truth? People with schizophrenia are more likely to be victims of violence than to commit it. Stigma makes it harder to get help, harder to find housing, harder to live freely. Let's be clear, schizophrenia is not a monster. It's a mental health condition and it deserves compassion. And yes, schizophrenia can be treated. There's no cure, but people can and do live meaningful lives. Treatment includes antipsychotic medications, therapy, routine support and structure. With the right help, some hold jobs, go to college, have families, but support and early treatment make all the difference. Post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. 
PTSD is a mental health condition that can develop after experiencing or witnessing a traumatic event. That trauma could be war, sexual assault, childhood abuse, a car crash, losing a loved one suddenly, domestic violence, natural disasters, medical trauma. What matters isn't how big the trauma was, it's how your brain and body responded to it. PTSD symptoms are intense, long-lasting, and deeply disruptive. They fall into four main categories. 1. Intrusion, flashbacks, nightmares, and intrusive thoughts. 2. Avoidance, staying away from reminders of the trauma. 3. Negative changes in thinking mood, guilt, shame, emotional numbness. 4. Hyperarousal, easily startled, anger outbursts, insomnia, panic. These symptoms can show up days, months, or even years after the trauma, and they can make everyday life feel like walking through a minefield. A flashback isn't just a memory, it's a full-body time warp. Your brain and body react as if the trauma is happening again. The smell of alcohol, the sound of footsteps, even a song on the radio, and boom, you're back there. Heart pounding, vision blurring, you're not remembering, you're reliving. Triggers are sights, sounds, smells, places or emotions that remind you of the trauma. They might seem harmless to others, a cologne, a hallway, a phrase, but to someone with PTSD, they're explosive. That's why many with PTSD isolate, overthink or seem on edge. They're constantly scanning for danger, even in safe places. Yes, many veterans have PTSD, but so do rape survivors. Children from abusive homes, medical patients with traumatic surgeries, car crash survivors, first responders, refugees, victims of bullying or neglect. Trauma doesn't care who you are, and PTSD doesn't always look like someone screaming in a war zone. Sometimes, it's a teacher zoning out mid-lesson, a nurse shaking while opening a door, a dad avoiding hugs. On the outside, someone with PTSD might seem fine, but inside, they're fighting, shame over surviving, fear of judgment, guilt for what they did or didn't do, constant exhaustion from emotional shutdowns. It's not about being weak. It's about surviving something you weren't meant to survive alone. PTSD is hard, but it's not hopeless. Here are a few things that actually help. Grounding techniques. Holding ice. Naming objects around you. Using your five senses. Therapy. EMDR. Trauma-focused CBT. Somatic therapy. Medication. Antidepressants. Anti-anxiety meds for some. Support groups. Finding others who get it. Creative expression. Art. Music. Writing. Movement. Healing isn't linear, but it's possible. Social anxiety disorder. Social anxiety disorder, also known as social phobia, is more than just shyness. It's a mental health condition where fear of being judged, embarrassed, or humiliated in social settings becomes intense and overwhelming, and it doesn't go away with just being confident. It affects daily life, school, work, relationships, even something as simple as ordering food. To someone with social anxiety, even a small interaction feels like public performance. The heart races, palms sweat, thoughts spiral. Your brain keeps replaying what you just said, looking for mistakes. You might smile and laugh on the outside, but inside it feels like drowning. Here are some everyday moments that feel like a battlefield with social anxiety. Making a phone call. Walking past a group of people. Speaking up in a Zoom meeting. Introducing yourself. Asking for help. Saying excuse me in public. Even walking into a room full of people already sitting down. Sound familiar? The brain of someone with social anxiety is wired for threat detection. The amygdala. The fear center lights up like it's under attack. Even though there's no real danger, the brain sends out fight-or-flight signals. So your body reacts as if you're being chased by a tiger, when really, someone just said tell us a bit about yourself. Let's clear up a few things. Myths. They're just shy. Facts. Shyness is a personality trait. Social anxiety is a disorder that interferes with life. Myths. They don't like people. Facts. Many with social anxiety love people. They just fear messing up in front of them. Myths. They're rude or aloof. Facts. Avoiding eye contact or small talk isn't disrespect, it's self-preservation. You can't cure social anxiety overnight, but here are real strategies that can help. 1. Breathing techniques. Slow your breath to calm your nervous system. 2. Cognitive reframing. Challenge thoughts like everyone thinks I'm stupid. 3. Exposure. Start small. Practice saying hello. Ask one question. Build up. Journaling. Write down anxious thoughts and reflect later. They're often irrational. 5. Therapy. CBT and social skills training can be life-changing. 6. Medication. In some cases, SSRIs or beta blockers can help reduce symptoms.